work, your organization, your organizing, your efforts had an impact. Now it's global. Now people know more about what's going on, uh, about sexual slavery, the uh, Song Noe. I think that's the way you say it, right? <laughs> sexual slavery. It's not comfortable. And, and so we have to uh, understand that you have made an impact, a global impact. But we need to continue to do this community by community, city by city, so that we start to educate this, the people in this country as to what happened in Asia, because we don't teach our kids what happened in Asia during World War II. We know a lot about Germany and Europe, but very little about Asia. You have to ask yourself why. And I can only point to one thing right now, and Judge Singh knows all about this when we fought a week. We protested the 1951 peace treaty between the United States and Japan, and it was the 50th year, was it? Or? 54. And we protested because we knew that there was a lot of things in the peace treaty that needs to be examined again. And I think that, you know, the issues around the POWs and the Bataan and the U.S. POWs, I think that was covered in the peace treaty. The Jap Japanese uh, government uses the peace treaty to say, you know, uh, the rape of Nanjing and the comfort women are all taken care of by other things. And we say, no, we don't accept that. And so we have to continue to raise our voices and continue this global awareness for the 200,000 World War II sex slaves, the Song Noye, the so-called comfort women. On their behalf, on their spirit, and their dignity, we must continue this work. Let me say one thing about um, our Hominy sister. Um, she, she came over and she testified in 2007, and she made a very strong but poignant uh, comment. And she said that uh, if the government cannot apologize to me, then give me back my youth. Give me back the springtime of my, my life. And I remember that because it was so powerful, and she said it so convincingly that no one ever can ever doubt that uh, she was you know, playing around. This whole movement started, however, in 1991 in Japan in the courts. There were three hominy that went to court and said they wanted to have recognition, they wanted an apology, they wanted compensation. And one of the women who, who identified herself, her bravery and her flame of justice was sparked by Kim Hak Sun. She was the first survivor who brought light to this issue and made it more public. So we, we owe her that thanks for having the strength to step forward in public and say, I've been a victim and I want an apology. Because in the beginning when they were used as sex slaves, it was a thing of shame. They couldn't go home. Many committed suicide. But she at a certain time in her life said, enough is enough. Japan owes me an apology. And so she went to Japan to want the government of Japan to formally acknowledge, apologize, and accept historical responsibility in a clear and unequivocal way. Right now, be clear. Now, Abe will say to everybody in this world, I've apologized. We've apologized. But you have to look at the wording. It is ambiguous. It's not clear. It's wishy-washy. And uh, um, Prime Minister Abe had two wonderful opportunities to um, say a, a very clear apology when he the first time when he came to Congress and he was um, invited to speak to the joint um, joint session of Congress to the House of Representatives and Senators but he passed it up he did not take that opportunity and the second time he had an uh, opportunity when he uh, addressed the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. Two opportunities he passed it up. I know one thing. He knows his responsibility. I'm convinced of it. I know that he has to do this. And I also know that he will try to outlive the grandmothers, the harmony. And we're not going to allow him to do that. So we have to continue the pressure 
upon Prime Minister Abe and his government. And we have to do it through our churches, through the women organizations, and through our youngsters, and talk to the people in Japan, women to women, church to church, scholars to scholars, to tell the population that this is necessary. Because when the Japanese people understand what happened, and when they learn, the compassionate the people, they will say, government, please do the right thing. We know that the prime, uh, the, the, um, the crown prince of Japan, Naruhito, he said publicly also, Prime Minister Abe, speak of history, humbly. He was sending them a message. And we need to push that message forward uh, through the kinds of works we do. We know that the harmony, every Wednesday in front of the Japanese uh, embassy in Seoul, they stand in front of the embassy and they protest. And they say, give us an apology. We need to know that, we need to understand that. And we need to also share with our young people. So that our young people will pick up the torch and say the same thing, to move forward and speak up and ask for what the 200,000 girls and women in Asia Pacific who suffered at the hands of the military system, they need that apology. And so time is running short for them. There's less than 100 survivors in the world. It's only 47 harmony come from women in, in, in uh, Korea, and eight passed away earlier this year. It's critical that they get their long overdue justice now. And I firmly believe that the government of Japan must make sure that its true history is being taught to future generations. And so, on this difficult issue, we have a personal responsibility to make sure that we teach each one, we reach to each one and we preach to each one about this necessity for an apology. It's no small thing. Because if Japan apologizes, then Japan's position will rise in the eyes of Korea, China, and other Asian countries. For me, if he doesn't apologize, I cannot trust him. I cannot trust the government of Japan. Because they cannot, and they do not have the courage to do the right thing. And so then, the, the justice that the comfort women need, our sisters need, is long overdue, so we must demand that. And let me close with this. We move through the issue of Nanjing, we move through the issue of comfort women, we move through the issue of unification of Korea, North and South Korea, when we can do all those things, we will set the history of Asia and of Japan correctly. We need to continue to do that. We need to unify North and South because it's about family unification. Our families are there. We need to tell our young people this is important. We need to teach them also, our own youngsters, that this is important. And so we need to move forward and make sure that we do that. And so. We all move forward as we did tonight. And it, what's that yell that the military say? Gachi gapshida? Gachi gapshida. Right? Thank you. Ooh.